Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Space exploration continues to be in the news. Three weeks after arriving on Mars for a two-year mission, NASA's Curiosity rover has already made history by beaming back to Earth the first audio recording of human voice from another planet, along with new images of the red giant. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss some of the developments. Keith, welcome to Second Take. What are the latest developments concerning NASA's space exploration program? Well, there's actually an awful lot going on. Uh, I think, of course, first we have to start off with the sad news of the death of Neil Armstrong uh, in late August at the age of 82 from uh, what is finally described as complications from cardiovascular procedures. And this, his death followed just a month after the death of America's first uh, woman astronaut, Sally Ride, who died at age 61 from cancer. So it's been a sad month for the American space program. But there's also been a lot of uh, constructive news out of the space program. Curiosity uh, gets a lot of attention, but there are a lot of things happening other than, other than curiosity. Uh, the Dawn mission, for example, which is an iron-powered spacecraft sent to examine the giant asteroid Vesta and the dwarf planet Ceres, is currently leaving Vesta. It should exit uh, Vesta's gravitational pull uh, within a few days at the start of a two-and-a-half-year flight to Ceres after spending a number of months on a highly successful mission examining the geology and geochemistry of Vesta. And way out, literally on the edge of the solar system, are the two Voyager probes, which are still functioning after 35 years of, of being in space. Voyager 2, which was launched before Voyager 1, is now the longest operating spacecraft. Uh, it's 15 billion kilometers from Earth. Uh, Voyager 1, which took a different route, is 18 billion kilometers from Earth. Both probes are still functioning. Both probes are still sending back da data back to Earth nearly every day. And as I said, they are right on the edge of the solar system. That is the zone where the charged particles from the sun, the solar wind, are countered by charged particles in interstellar space. The two probes are passing through what scientists call the stagnation zone, where the charged particles from the sun uh, drop to almost zero speed, and, uh, are, and the magnetic field of the sun is apparently piling up as a result of pressure from the interstellar particles. So we're hopeful that the two probes will actually break through into real interstellar space in the coming months and years. If we just stand still at curiosity for a moment, what do scientists hope to find on Mars? Well, what they're technically trying to find is whether conditions ever existed that were conducive to life. So it's not that they are looking directly for life, but they're looking to ascertain whether life could have evolved there. If they bump into living microbes, they will be absolutely delighted, but they're not expecting to do that. It's a probe into Mars's distant past. The more we learn about Mars, the more exciting it gets. Uh, there's growing uh, belief that Mars uh, billions of years ago, not only had a much thicker atmosphere than it does now, but that it had free-flowing water and perhaps even oceans on its surface. And Curiosity is going to provide a lot of data to pin this down, to confirm this kind of emerging uh, picture of Mars as a second Earth billions of years ago. Could any comparisons be drawn between the latest Mars expedition and the lunar landmark set by the late Neil Armstrong? Well, in a sense, yes, and in a sense, no. Uh, they are both incredible engineering feats. There is no doubt about it. But 
Neil Armstrong was a human being. He and Buzz Aldrin, who accompanied him to the lunar surface, and Michael Collins, who stayed in orbit in the command module, they were putting their necks out. And uh, as is now well known, the landing was nearly a disaster because the incredibly primitive computer on the lunar module got overloaded and was flying them straight into a boulder-laden uh, crater, which had been a disaster. And Armstrong had to take manual control and fly it and find a safe landing spot and did so and landed with 20 seconds fuel left. So curiosity is an incredible engineering feat. It's uh, scientifically incredibly important. Scientifically, it may be more important than the original lunar uh, landing by Apollo 11. But the fact remains is Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin risked their lives uh, for that lunar exploration. Uh, no human is risking his or her life on the current exploration of Mars, though I have no doubt that if NASA were able to put together a manned mission to Mars tomorrow, there would be a big queue of volunteers willing to take that risk. Keith, thank you very much. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.